And um, here we have a list of just different website categories. <laughs> so a lot of times as a web designer, um, you want to try to find inspiration, and it's really hard unless you've done it for a long time, a very, very long time, and have extensive work in art um, to be able to come up with something. So, uh, I, like me personally, I go to a lot of these sites like CSS Remix, um, take a look at, a, at the site, see what sort of elements I can draw out of it, and um, not necessarily copy, but just sort of gain my ideas from their site design. And if you, are, if you want to look back on any of these, um, any of those links before, all, all these slides are, will be posted on our website, um, and you can go back and look at uh, look back at the next slide. So now we're going to talk about the class itself, the syllabus. Um, attendance is mandatory. Um, there's a lot of people that want to take this class, and you know, if you don't really come to lecture, there's really no point in taking the class. So if you have greater than two <coughs> unexpressed absences, we will fail you. Um, last also count towards your attendance grade. Um, but if you do have an excusable conflict, sick or exam conflict, just email us and we, we can excuse you from that. Um, yeah, as, as, as I said before last, um, every, uh, every lecture is going to be structured as a one hour as lecture and then one hour as lab time. Um, lab is, you, you don't have to be here for the one hour lab time, but we highly recommend it because um, all three of us are going to be here for the lab. And if you have any questions, we'll be able to answer, answer them. And you can usually finish a lab within a one hour period. Um, and labs are weekly and they're due by the end of the class. And they do count for their attendance break. Um, coursework, every, every week uh, before class, uh, we're going to have, we're going to release a quiz. And uh, it's going to be like one or two questions. They're going to be on the topic of what uh, of the lecture that was the week before. And they are due by the end of the class. So that's ten. That's ten percent. Um, they're they're usually pretty simple, broad ideas. If you were if you were attending and paying attention to class um, the week before, you'll be able to do the quizzes. No uh, Mini projects for, uh, are forty percent of your grade. Um, what mini projects are are just a couple projects um, that will release. Um, it'll usually involve designing something or programming something, and uh, those are that's forty percent of your grade. So this is. Pretty significant. Don't don't skip on the mini project. And lastly, a fin mandatory final project, um, which is due on the last day of class. It's twenty percent of your grade. Um, what this is going to be is we're going to it's going to be basically kind of an open-ended project. We're going to have some requirements on them, but basically for the most part, it's going to be you design using you design the website using what we taught you in this class. And this is mandatory. If you do not finish this, you cannot pass the class. Um, does anybody have any questions for Kenny? It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is the final project? Like, what is it going to be a website? Like, yeah. Just a like one website. Okay. Yeah, it might be like a collection of pages. Um, because we expect you to be able to create more than one. Page. Oh yeah. 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 Like, yeah, basically like a website. If you, um, if you do all the labs and all the projects, you'll be fine. Like. I know what you're doing. So. And if you looked at the, the previous stuff that we showed, um, like exam what's that example, some of those were previous final questions. Okay. Oh, did you guys do some last hour, like the second hour of this class? Uh, Can you hear us? <laughs> no. Thanks. Sorry. We have uh, plenty. Um, so the website, are you going to be posting them on the class website, or are we just going to have them on our computer? Yeah, so actually, um, those class accounts that we gave you, <laughs> 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 I don't know <laughs> 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 If you're officially enrolled in the class, we handed out class account forms uh, with the CS188 dash two letters and your password. Uh, if you log into those, uh, we'll, we'll give you a specific set of instructions um, later. But if you, if you, uh, those those accounts can actually post website on them, and you, um, they can be available on the internet. We'll tell you how to access them later. Yeah. Like for the um, initially when we do HTML and stuff, you don't you won't need to host it online because you can just like have it locally in your browser. But we, when we start getting into like PHP and everything, you're gonna need a server. So we'll like teach you how to do that. And everything. And plus, if you want to show people and have it on the internet, you can also put it on the um, internet server. Wait, right, you want to read it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if we do it that way, won't the website get deleted? The next year when our account gets deleted? Yes. Yeah, so we recommend you save all your work and then find another host when the class. Okay. Okay. Uh,
Yeah, yeah Berkeley Tech. Yeah. 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 So for people who are coming, like, who have class at end at eight or something? Um, how many hours a week do you think will be working outside class? Um, so that's really going to depend on the project or for that week. Um, Some of the projects are easy. Some are, might be harder for someone who doesn't have experience in programming. But the thing is, um, we we like understand that most of you do not have experience in programming. So we're not going to just like chuck a ton of hard stuff at you. Um, we expect that you don't know it at all, and we're going to teach you from scratch. So, but um, generally, many projects like as long as you keep up and pay attention and make sure you remember stuff from the past week, they're generally going to go by pretty easy. Um, just like a little minor difficulties, just enough challenge to that you can overcome. And the labs usually are made. We make sure that the labs can be done in basically the amount of time that we give you uh, in in class. If you were to do it outside of class, we're not going to give any guarantees on how long it takes. But if you if you stay after for the one hour last time, um, you you can usually finish it with our help. With the challenge, you know. Any other questions? Everyone knows everything about the class now. Right. Is he on the quiz? Yeah. Well, what's the URL okay. for the class website? Um, web design yeah. detail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> web design detail. Oh, okay. Um. So, web design detail. dot com. We are going to post. Uh, there's announcements on the front page on, on the class website. Please check at least once a week before class. We're going to have. Pretty useful information on there. We're going to have, um, you know, if, we, if there's a mini project due or something like that, we'll let you know. Um, there's going to be lecture slides on there um, and, uh, and um, lecture. Uh, every week, uh, we're going to have lectures going to be laid out and we're going to have slides and then we're going to have a roll call. Um, assignments, uh, you submit your assignments on the class website. So everyone is uh, after um, during the last time for this lecture, we're going to have uh, we're going to set up your account for webdesigndetail.com. And then you're going to learn how to submit and find out and look at your grades and things like that. So all of this stuff is going to be done on the website. And there's also a chat room on the website so you can collaborate and you can find a, you can ask us questions and we'll try to respond on the site. And real-time status, you can find out what assignments, what tendencies you're missing and your favorite assignments. So all this stuff on the top of the website. Any questions? Yes? Yeah, you can put it, you can have the page here. Okay, and then what other programs do we need? We'll be discussing like the software that you need afterwards. Um, we have instructions on the website for both the, um, Windows and Mac. Um, and you also have these, uh, which have all the software like loaded on them already. So it depends on what you want to use, but we'll definitely go over that during the lab time today. Any other questions? So now we're going to uh, basically contest lecture, we're done with the ministry of um, So what every, everyone here should probably know about your browser, right? Because that's what you use to uh, browse the internet. Um, you might use Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, or Chrome. And this is what the browser basically does is it's like a explorer into, it, 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 it's like a, the internet, it shows you what's on the internet. <laughs> it, it shows you the files that are available on the internet. You type in uh, a URL on the internet, and it basically tells your browser where to look for that file. Somewhere, you know, it could be a couple thousand miles away. Where to look for that file, and how to and how to display it. Right. So, um, basically, that's a private function. You download and display files posted on a remote server. That's a server that's not your own computer. That's what it does. And a server is something that's basically designed to respond to browsers or respond to um, what we call clients, which is basically end users um, that, that send requests for files. So these, basically, what these things do uh, is respond to requests. That's it. And they make a set of their files accessible to people on the internet. So there are, these are two kinds of servers. You probably don't know about them because um, you don't see them. You don't see them. Uh, you don't see these two um, things happening. Which is Apache and Microsoft IIS, are, and they respond to your HTML request. So they give you the HTML file from the server. Is there any questions? And 
so what happens in, in this interaction is your browser sends to the internet, uh, you, you type in, say, www.google.com, and it sends that request to the internet. And it, from, from your request to www.google.com, the internet or routers along the internet know how to, how to find that location that you requested. And once they find the location you requested on the server at Google, Google look at your request, say, you want my index home, you want my home page. So it says, sure, and it sends it back over the internet. And um, it, it sends it back with, uh, with you as a destination, and it gives you their, their file. Oh. And uh, basically, this is how you find something on the internet. It is the uh, URL. And the URL specifies the location on the file on the web. It's actually just like if you have a Windows computer. Uh, a, 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 a analogy would be you know, C colon slash uh, my computer or something like that. And that's, it, but instead you're saying HTTP colon slash slash um, berkeley.edu and a path and a file. Does anyone have any questions? I know this is pretty confusing stuff, like especially if you're not familiar with this kind of technology or web dev in general. Any candy? Does anyone understand it? Okay, if you understand it, raise your hand. Cool. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so um, one of the most important things you have to know if you're going to create websites is HTML. Um, and HTML actually stands, stands for Hypertext Markup Language, which is kind of a lot to say. So um, HTML is basically the computer coding language for creating websites. So without HTML, you couldn't really create websites. Um, it's like it's like gives structure to ordinary tech you use. And I'll show you what that means after. Um, and what I really want to emphasize is HTML, H, yeah, HTML tags are really just text files. Like if you go to your computer and you create a text file, right? And the extension is .txt. This is the exact same thing. It's just um, you're telling your computer that, that it's in this format, so it knows how to uh, render it or interpret the, um, the tag. Okay, using markup. So I have some cool animations here. Um, well, not some cool, just appearance. So here is, like, if you have two paragraphs, this is how you type it. Like, if you were in a normal, say you were in Notepad or Text Edit, whatever operating system you use, and you want to make two paragraphs. This is basically how you type it, right? So this is a paragraph, this is a paragraph. So, this doesn't look that bad, it's because each of the lines is only like one sentence, or each of the paragraphs is only one sentence. So imagine if you had like a 10 page essay, and all of your text was just like continuous, like it would be really hard to read. So what you would do in HTML is you would enclose both of the paragraphs in the P tag. And the P stands for paragraph, and what this actually does is tell your browser that these should be paragraphs. So when the browser goes ahead and renders the, um, the code that you've written, you get a few paragraphs. In the Here's a slightly more complicated example. Um, without HTML, this page would look like this. So if you can't read it, it says, about us, who we are, French bros, the family owned, blah, blah, blah. And it's really hard to read. If you saw this on a website, you'd be like, what the heck, these people suck at reading websites. But instead, you would include, like, if you actually were writing an HTML page and you want to make it very accessible and very, like, easy to look at, um, you would enclose these things in different tags so the um, browser actually knows what it's looking at and can format it appropriately. So, for example, we have About Us, which you want to make the page title, right? So you'd actually enclose, we'll go over more of what a different um, HTML tag later, but you would enclose this About Us text in two, like, heading tags, so H1 and then have a closing tag for it, and then who, who we are, it could be in another heading, um, you can enclose it with other heading tags, and then just do these paragraphs just like we, I showed you earlier with those P tags. And it's kind of annotating the entire text file with what each section should be. So then when you actually render it as HTML, you get this really nice looking page instead of just a bunch of text that you can't tell what it actually says. Does that make sense? Everyone nod if you understand. <coughs> oh, yes, question. Uh, um, we're going to be going over, like, we might be going over <coughs> HTML5 a little bit. Is that what you're yeah. interested in? Yeah, we'll definitely go over some HTML5 at the end. Um, we want to stick to you, since HTML5 isn't fully supported by all browsers yet, we kind of want to teach you the, like, the current standard, and then we'll go into the cool things that HTML5 um, uh, gives you. I'm not going to 
the trust for the year. Any other questions? Yes. Do you think we'll cover root uh, it's listed right now in our minds as an advanced topic. Um, if you, but like at most, we would just like kind of gloss over. If you're really interested in learning root Um are you an East major? Yeah, there's going to be a CS class next semester, CS 169, taught by Armando Fox, which actually dives into all of root Questions? Yeah. Question. By show of hands, how many of you actually know HTML already? Besides making things like Okay, that's good. Okay, so I talked about these HTML tags. Like, what are they? So, I actually provide markup. Um, you provide markup via tag, and they're interpreted by the browser, but they aren't actually displayed on the page. So you saw before, I was using the code. I was saying like T, and then my text, and then the closing tag to represent a paragraph, right? But when you visit websites, you don't actually see those tags on the page because they're interpreted by the browser, and they just like format them, and then it doesn't display them. Um, so these open and curly carrots, I don't know what they're called, just like less than or greater than signs are used to differentiate tags from the rest of the document. So this is what an HTML tag actually looks like. So you have a opening brace or whatever, and then the actual element type, and we'll have a list of, um, a list of different HTML elements in the next um, lecture. And you have a closing brace. So you use these tags to um, enclose HTML elements. Um, HTML elements are generally composed of like opening tags and closing tags. There are a couple of exceptions, like, yeah, I won't go into it, but there are a couple of exceptions we'll show you later. Um, some of the HTML tags take, take attributes, but also we'll show you later. So the most simple example of uh, doing an HTML element is you have this text, which is the content of the HTML element, and you have these opening and closing tags. And there's a really important difference between the opening and closing tags. You'll notice that the closing tags have this backslash, and this is what indicates to the browser that I am done with my HTML. Like if you forgot this, it would just, like for example, pretend this was, this was like a bold tag, right? If you just put two bold tags and no closing tags, it would make everything after bold as well. So you want to make sure that you include the closing tag so it knows when to stop applying some like class signal. Okay, so um, how many guys know about view source already? Okay, well, I'll show you. I'll show those of you who don't know right So on most browsers, you can actually go. So this is our website, by the way. Um, this says Spring 11, but you can actually just go to webdesigndetail.com and it'll, um, it'll redirect you. And you, in Chrome, you can actually do this thing where it says, you say inspect element, or yeah, inspect element, um, or if you use Firefox, there's a plugin called Firebug that you can use to look at all the HTML. Um, actually, you can just, instead of Inspect element, you can use view page source as well. So if I say view page source, I'll go ahead and see all of the, the HTML that's on this page. And you'll notice that, like, I have these spans that I had before, right? You can't read this, it says span and it has a closing text. Book. So this is how you compose your HTML uh, pages. Any questions? Am I talking too fast? Because I know I talk really fast. Who thinks I'm talking really fast? Okay. Thanks for the honesty. Um, oh yeah. Also, um, some of you might know, but a lot of you probably don't know, is that you can actually modify the HTML on the website using that inspect HTML tool I said before. So if I just right click this, um, on Chrome there's inspect element, as I mentioned before, Firefox can use Firebug. Um, you can inspect the element, and then it'll actually show you, like, it'll highlight all the different parts of it, so you can see what your design is actually made of. And then, if I want to edit this course announcement, I can go ahead and double click it and say gibberish. <laughs> but yeah. So of course, this doesn't actually edit the page. It just does it locally. But if you want to kind of try out how HTML works, or like go to some like uh, well-known websites and see if you can like kind of modify the HTML yourself for practice, that would like that would be really cool too. So just a tool if you guys aren't aware of it already. Just to recap. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, so we, we <laughs> talked about we talked about browsers um, and how they're related to the, the clients and servers. So once again, in order to interface with the internet, you open a browser, Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, uh, Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever it is, and you type in a URL and that URL redirects a request 
to some server out in the wild. Okay? It could be like a foot away from you or it could be halfway across the world. It really doesn't matter. So, but what happens is when it contacts that server, it then re sends you a response. And with that response, generally um, you get the requested file you want. So when you visit something like google.com and contact Google servers, they'll respond with their, uh, the HTML of their homepage. And uh, when they respond with the HTML of their homepage, um, that gets rendered by the browser and it has all the tags that Amber talked about. And um, so, yeah, so just one thing to keep in mind um, is just that HTML and CSS are sort of like strictly text files and um, they don't really do anything like programming um, at all. So you can't you can't make it figure out like some algorithms or figure out how to do one plus one. There's strictly files that um, have at what we call markup. They just tell how files should be formatted uh, and how they should look like. That's basically it. Okay. Uh, so this is more of a diagram of uh, what happens when you sort of open a site. Um, as Alan talked about earlier, you give an example where you would contact Google.com. Um, and for example, when you would request an image, your, your browser here would um, go into the internet uh, and somehow magically contact the server, and um, which is located here. And then the server will give you a request and uh, will send back uh, what you request. And um, here's just a sort of example of uh, what happens when you, most of the time when you load a normal kind of website. Um, for something decently complicated enough, it doesn't just request one single item, like an image, right? When you when you open a website, um, like a Facebook album, what happens is it contacts Facebook and requests the HTML page and along with the styling that goes along with it, that goes with it, and uh, it gets returned back to you. And then when when the browser interprets the HTML, it starts looking for things that it needs to fetch, like for example the images in the page. It hasn't uh, gotten that yet, so it starts uh, it starts looking through the HTML and sees what it needs to also fetch. And then, for example, if there's an image, it would continue. It would send another request to the server, um, and the server would respond with that particular image. And it would have to do that for each um, image that it has on the page. So here's just an example of um, a website, awindustries.com, and all these sort of things that get loaded along with it. Okay, so um, we have a couple of challenge questions where you can get candy. Um, and so graduate. Yeah, I guess graduate. <laughs> um, so when you visit http uh, google.com slash index.html, um, is the only file that is loaded, is that the only file that's loaded with the HTML? Is that the only file that gets requested? Yeah. Uh, uh, google isn't yet loaded. Right, exactly. A Google image gets loaded along with your um, with your HTML request. Does anybody else know what else is loaded? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good job. Okay. <laughs> so this is um, the second question here is more about just testing your understanding of. Um, URL. So um, you can go ahead and read that question and tell me if you have the answer for that. Can you guys see in the back okay or is it kind of small? It's kind of small? Um, okay. Um, we'll see what we can do about that next class. Anyone with answers? A file? Like you move it into a file on my dog? A directory. A directory. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Hey, good yeah, job. Good uh, <laughs> Careful. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So for next time, um, we're gonna have a quiz. Don't worry if you guys are paying attention. Um, it'll be pretty easy. It might be a combination of like administrivia and like really basic HTML since we only really went over like making HTML elements. 
Um, we also want you to fill out your um, SID so we can give you card key access to this lab. Um, it's on a Google form and it's on the website. You guys don't have to do that now. You can also do it um, when you get home. And but things that we want you to do now to go leave yet is we want you to register on the website and I'll show you how to do that um, using your account form number. So you need to make your username the exact account form number. So TS198 like XX. So you have XX. And also, um, if you want to install your software, we'll be available here to help you. Um, there are some instructions online, so you can easily do it at home as well. Well, it depends on what you would want to do. Um, what I said in the question earlier, so if you um, want to use one of the Mac computers here when you're programming, it has all the software you need, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to be programming at home and everything, um, we have instructions on the software that we pick for you. Um, for PC, we're going to be using Notepad++ and FileZilla something, yeah. And then for um, Mac, you're going to be using TextMate, and you actually get a soft, you have a license from UC Berkeley for TextMate, um, and CyberDuck, which is a STD client. Um, also, here is the PCN. So if you um, if you want to, because like, I these aren't like in the PowerPoint online, so you might want to write it down now. Um, if you are lower division, or you can just enroll now if you're on your computer. So if you're lower division, which means that you say I want lower division credits, or you're a freshman or a sophomore, um, you use CompSci 9820, which is, the CCN is 26448. And if you're upper division, which means you said I want upper division credit, or you're a junior or senior, you want to use the upper division, um, which the CCN is 26655. And you can always email us if you forget, at staff at uh, webdesigndetail.com. So right now is officially lab time. Oh, oh wait, just oh, kidding. Is is Melody Lim here? Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. If you don't have your account form and you are enrolled, which means that we sent you an acceptance thing, um, come see us because you'll need that to register or get into the um, class. Oh yeah, and when you do enroll for the class, you'll be put on a wait list. But don't worry because we'll be sending out we'll be sending the registrar guy the list of people and he'll let you in automatically. Uh, okay, so for lab time, get your account forms. I guess we did this already. Uh, register on the website. I'll show you how to do this now. So go to www.webdesigncal.com slash register. Um, or you just go to the website and click register on the bottom. Um, use the same email you use in that, your application along with your first name and last name that you use on, on the application. And please, please use the login that you have on your account form so you can kind of coordinate with everyone because we already have your um, your IDs. Uh